So in the previous video we soldered together the Wemos board and a couple of modules for it. Today we're going to be looking at the button press module, which uh, in some ways is overkill because you can just you know hook up a simple little button, but it does make it easier and it's sturdier for button presses. And uh, we're just going to be basically slightly using a slightly modified version of the default uh, web client and button press. Main difference on here compared to the default um, code is that uh, the default code checks for when the button is low and we have to change that to high. It all depends on how you're check -teching, detecting button presses, whether you're using a, a re um, resistor or not. Um, but by default, it's using digital pin 3 on the Wismos module, which when working in the Arduino uh, IDE is going to be GPIO pin 0. And so what we're going to do is we're going to check when that button is pressed and we're just going to send a very simple HTTP request to a web server and that web server is going to respond uh, and make some changes to the server. So let's go ahead and have a look at this but first I want to talk about another change that I made to the code. So this project is basically the same as my doorbell project that I did in a previous video where this is the button that is hooked to a ESP in my garage. Now after having this set up for a while I realized there was a problem. Uh, every once in a while, I would get ghost rings. No one would press the button, but the signal would go through. And this would happen basically every other day. So a few times a week, I was getting these ghost rings from my doorbell. I eventually did set up my code on the server to only detect button presses between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Uh, so that uh, while I'm sleeping, my even if someone rang my doorbell, it wouldn't wake me up. Uh, that cut down the problem in half, but still, there was still like twice a week we would get doorbell rings when nobody pressed the button. So what I ended up doing to fix this was making a change in the code. What I did was set a counter in the loop that counts when the button is pressed. And what I did was I did test presses. I pressed the button as fast as I can. And that loop was looping so fast that even though I pressed it as fast as I could, uh, it would count somewhere between 40 to 60 loops in that quick little button press. So I changed my code to count when you're pressing the button. If that count in the loop is less than 50, the button doesn't press. And that fixed my problem of ghost rings. And the chance of someone going less than 50, they'd have to be really clicking that button fast, where most people are going to press the button. So I did the same thing in this code. Now, on my other channel, I'm going to go over the software uh, of this project in detail. Today we're just going to look at how it works. So be sure to check out, uh, I'll try to remember to put a little uh, uh, note tag there in this video so that you can click to that video. Uh, it'll probably come out a day after I release this video, or, or maybe the same day, but, but a little bit later. Um, just staggering them a little bit. So go ahead and check that out if you want more, de no, more detail on the software on this code. But you can get all the software in a link in the description. But let's go ahead and look at some examples. So again, here's the ESP uh, Wemos module or board with the button press module on it. And it's already hooked to my Wi-Fi. Now I have a wire here, but this is just for power. It's not sending a signal to the computer. Well, it's sending a signal serial, but it's not uh, affecting what we're doing here on the screen. And what I've set up is I set up a basic little HTML page uh, that checks uh, a certain file. And every time I press this button, it sends a signal to the server, which generates a random number between 0 and 9 and puts it in this file. So this web page is constantly checking that file. And when it changes, it takes that number, 0 through 9, and selects uh, one of 10 images to display on the screen. So when I press the button, you can see it changes the image and it's going to grab one of ten. Uh, you also notice that when I press the button, the light here lights up momentarily, uh, and I have that in the code to prevent that when you press the button, again, it's looping so fast, you don't want it to think when you press the button once that you've pressed it 40 times or something like that. So uh, I put like a half a second, let's see. No, about a second. So I have it set up in the code so you can't press the button more than once a second, but you can obviously change that in the code. Now, again, this is using simple HTTP requests, so it's not the fastest thing in the world. I mean, it's great. I click it and almost right away the picture shows up. You don't really notice the delay at all. Obviously, this setup is not going to be good if you're trying to control a video game or something like that. There are obviously better options for that, but even if you want to use uh, a Wemos module through Wi-Fi to control something a little more accurately, you could use a web sockets, which is not something I've done with the ESP8266, but there is example code in there. Uh, but for most of what I do, HTTP requests are simple and fast enough for what I'm doing. 
Now, I pressed the button there, there was a little delay there. So sometimes you'll get a little bit of delay, and that's what I'm talking about. For the most part though, when you press the button, it comes up right away. And again, it's grabbing uh, one of ten pictures randomly, so there is a slight possibility that you're going to get the two, same two pictures, same picture twice in a row. Uh, so if you click it and it lights up and nothing changes the first time, it might have just been that it randomly grabbed the same image. Uh, but again, all the code for the ESP uh, Wemos module and uh, for this little web server uh, uh, HTML code here will be in the project in the notes. So here again, just the ESP Wemos module uh, and button click uh, as an HTTP client, as a web client, doing just an HTTP request to a web server. But I've changed the web server to now send a text to my phone. So I'm going to click the button, and there is going to be a little bit of a delay. It's going to... There you go. Uh, usually it takes between 5 to 10 seconds for a text to come through. Uh, but again, this is how the one of the functions of my doorbell at the front of my house. Um, but you can set this for any type of notifications. Again, it's not instant. Again, I, I find on average it's 5 to 10 seconds for the text to come through. But this is just sending a request to a website, and the website is sending a text to my phone. So again, the ESP8266 is a great little chip. These Wemos chips are, are nice, uh, small, and cheap. Start that together, and then you can slide in any of the uh, modules you get for it. And the uh, hardest thing is just you know getting a power supply. So you get a battery backup or hook it to uh, power in your house somehow. Uh, but you can have it receive signals or send signals. And here with the button press, we're just sending basic HTTP requests. Uh, but then you can have the server do whatever you want. Nice, simple, cheap. Go ahead, check them out on eBay. I'll try to put a, uh, a link in the description. And as always, please visit uh, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. Also, check out my other channel. Uh, there you'll find, again, I'm going to do an in-depth tutorial on the software for this, where this was just a hardware overlook. Thank you for overlook. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Thank you for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great day.